All right, we are going to start How to Draw Ponies, the easy approach, in just a few minutes. While you guys are waiting, I recommend uh, if you have any type of pencil or pen and paper, go ahead and get them out so you can practice. Okay, I'll be I'll be just a minute. Okay. I can do this. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> okay. Make sure that every free stream is working and all that. So. Before we start, does anybody have a video camera? Okay, if somebody could video this and then email it to me, that would be awesome. <laughs> oh, Everfree is recording? Yes! Okay. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Let me move this out of my line of sight. All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to How to Draw Ponies, the easy approach. My name is Neil Waycaster, also known on the interwebs as Draw Ponies. Hello, everyone. Yep, I, I would just like to know, how many of you guys are uh, Redditors on Reddit My Little Pony? Yeah. Yes, okay. You've probably seen my stuff on there that uh, you guys apparently really like upvoting my stuff for some reason. <laughs> Uh, uh, another, another question I have. Who listens to the uh, show Dr. Hooves Adventures by Pony in a Box? Yes. Uh, I am one of the voice actors for Dr. Hooves Adventures. So you might recognize me. <clears throat> Sergeant Kazoo, you're being taken on all sides by Hoof and Troops. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so. so maybe you've heard me before or seen me. If not... Hello! <laughs> okay, so let's get started. You might look at this picture on the screen and say, I could never draw that, ever. I can barely draw a stick figure. That's fine. 
The first ponies that I drew looked like fat dogs. They looked awful. Uh, like, I look back at them and I'm like, oh, how could I, wow, okay. If you can draw a circle and basic lines, you can draw a pony. All it takes is practice and a few tips and tricks. Here's just one example of how much you can improve if you practice. You might not guess it from this picture, but this girl is famous across the Brony community for her art. She posted this on her Tumblr just 12 months ago. She now draws like this. Yeah. So don't just take my word for it. I started drawing ponies, uh, I think about eight months ago, and yeah, again, they looked awful. <laughs> but I can, I can tell you, with practice, you can and will improve. One way to improve is to get expert advice, which I will do my best to give today. The practice is all on you. Uh, the advice I will give you today is specifically tailored to sketching with pencil, because that's a really good foundation for uh, starting out drawing ponies. But the principles that we're going to discuss, such as construction drawing, uh, apply to digital art, digital painting as well. Our panel today is in three separate parts. First, uh, we're going uh, to do a short presentation about the basics that you need to know. That's what we're doing right now. Uh, we'll discuss horse anatomy briefly, then go on to construction drawing and how to make your pony using simple circles and lines. After that, we'll discuss tips for the My Little Pony style, such as eyes, proportions, and so forth. After that, I'm going to draw a pony live on the webcam, and you're all free to draw along. And any time that we have left, I'll answer questions. One of the reasons why the MLP animation looks beautiful and natural is that the puppets used to make the show in Adobe Flash have the same bone structure as a real pony. Many beginners don't realize this and have trouble with leg positioning in particular. But once you realize that the ponies have three very specific bones in their legs, it's much easier. You'll notice that on the characters, like you see on Twilight Sparkle, uh, the rib cage and the rump are squished together, uh, unlike on a regular horse where there's uh, actually room for the internal organs. <laughs> um, uh, on the My Little Pony style, the legs are stubbier, the head is larger, but the bone structure is the same. However, there's always an exception. They do break form to do things like Rainbow Dash, best day ever! But uh, that's to be expected of a cartoon, obviously. So learn the bones of the pony, and I can guarantee you art will be much easier. Next, construction drawing. This is using simple circles and lines to figure out the posing of your character before adding details. One of the most common mistakes that I see beginners make, at, I do a live stream every Saturday at livestream.com slash drawponies, and uh, it's, it's so much fun, you guys should all come. Uh, and I critique art uh, on there. You can send me a link to your DeviantArt or uh, just an image file, and I'll, I'll look at it and be like, oh, well this looks great, and this sucks. So, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'll try not to say that it sucks when it does. So. <laughs> I'm kidding again. Okay, anyway. Um, but one of the most common mistakes that I see beginners make is drawing a very detailed head and then moving on to the rest of the body. What if halfway through you realize the head is positioned wrong? Use construction drawing to determine the pose, and that problem is a thing of the past. But why should I use construction drawing, you might ask. Construction drawing is used by almost every cartoon artist in the world, except beginners. You can see that Sibzy, the head storyboard artist for MLP, uses it. You can see uh, the gray lines on the picture. Um, the heads are a sphere with a line cutting it in half to show where the eyes go. Uh, this, using construction drawing, you can make a 3D looking image on a 2D piece of paper much easier. If you needed any more proof of the merit of construction drawing, this is also the method that Lauren Faust uses. You can see that she drew a circle for the head, one for the rump and simple lines showing where the legs should go. This is very important that you guys do this in your drawings because it makes it much easier. So you ask, how do I use construction drawing to draw a pony? Well, I'm glad you ask. If you have a pen and paper, then please feel free to start, uh, start drawing along if you want. The first step is to draw three circles. 
One is a perfect circle for the head. It's a perfect circle if you're drawing uh, from a side view or a three-quarters view. If you're drawing from the front, it's squished just a little bit. The rib cage and the rump circles are also slightly squished, and they overlap a little bit in the middle. One of the most common problems that I see in uh, it, people just starting to draw ponies is that uh, they will draw the two, the two circles for the rib cage and the butt. They will draw them either far apart or, or just barely touching or something like that. If you do that, the pony's body looks like a wiener dog. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> it, it is possible to get the correctly proportioned pony like that, but it's much more difficult. Just draw the lines like you see here with the slightly overlapping circles. I guarantee you it's much easier. Next step, and I'll, I'll discuss all of this more in depth when I'm drawing on the webcam. Add simple construction lines to show the joints, the leg structure, and the muzzle of your pony. Draw a line to show how the spine connects to the head and draw the legs with the appropriate joints. If the legs are straight, you can cheat a little bit and just draw a, a cur like a slightly curved line like I have for the front leg here. But especially if, you're, if your pony is like, I don't know, ah, or something, you definitely want to draw the bones of the legs so that it's much easier. OK. Uh, muzzle positioning. This is, a, this is a really good trick. If you cut the head into fourths, then you cut the, uh, the front of the head there where you see the muzzle, you cut it into sixteenths then that 16th line is where the muzzle needs to go. Let's see. If your pony is a unicorn, uh, split there at the top into eighths, and that eighth line shows you where the horn should go. Next step, outlines. Finally, your pony actually looks like a pony. The thing is, this is where everyone wants to start. Uh, most people, especially beginners, Start by drawing the outlines. It is 10 times more difficult to draw it that way. Draw the construction lines first, and then you're just like, oh, well, yeah, the leg goes here. No problem. We'll talk about this more in depth during the sketching time, but a few tips to get you started. A very common mistake is to put the ear on top of the head like the pony has horns. No, the ear starts halfway down the head and it's about the same size as the eye. As you can see here, the muzzle on a female pony is rounded and not pointy if you're going for show accurate style. For the belly, make a curved line connecting the rib cage and the rump circles. Make sure your lines are smooth and that they flow into one another. Ponies don't have angles. Ponies are very fluid. Next step, erase any construction lines that are not part of the outline Add the mane, tail, eyes, and shading. A again, we're going to talk about this more in just a minute. If you want, you can add clothing as well. For this, for all of these different parts, you should use a reference. There are tons of great show accurate pieces of art that you can use for practice. When starting out, you should, by all means, copy the works of others. That's what I did. Like the first, like several dozen drawings on my DeviantArt are just, I found a vector and I drew it. And that was how I learned the proportions. That was how I learned just all these, all these different techniques that I'm teaching you. I also learned a lot from Reddit, My Little Pony Drawing School, which is a great, a great site for uh, getting critique on your art. Once you understand where everything goes on the pony, you can start drawing new and exciting poses. But Start with just basic side views and simple views first. Construction drawing takes a lot of practice. Don't expect to get it right the first time. If you do, that's awesome. You're a brilliant genius. But don't expect it. In the words of one of my favorite uh, webcomic artists, Lackadaisy Cats. Anybody read Lackadaisy Cats? I thought so. OK. Uh, what, what she said was, don't give up if construction drawing doesn't work especially well the first time you try it, or the 98th time you try it. Keep drawing. The final step is to practice, practice, practice. 
Once you understand the basic side and front views, you can move on to three-quarter views, like you see with Sexy Spitfire here. <laughs> if you're, <laughs> dat plot, I know. <laughs> oh, you, I, I know, I know, I know. Uh, if you're feeling adventurous, you could try drawing a male pony, even though apparently 90% of Equestria is female for some reason. <laughs> I think Lauren Faust likes to do cartoons about girls. I'm not sure. Okay, uh, I, I personally like to draw the Braeburn style head. Uh, there are several different male pony heads you can see on uh, like Prince Blue Blood, Braeburn, and Fancy Pants all have different styles of heads. Again, use a reference, please. <laughs> that is the most common mistake with beginners is they're just like, I want to draw Twilight. I'm like, no, 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 no. Go to your computer, take two minutes to do a Google search or a DeviantArt search for a, for a picture of Twilight. Even if it's not the pose that you're doing, just so that you get the mane to look right, you get the tail to look right, the proportions correct, it's very important. Uh, to draw the male style head like you see here, uh, just draw a line straight from the top of the head down for the muzzle, uh, down for the mouth, and swoop back to the base of the head. Next, a few tips and tricks specifically for the My Little Pony style. If you take nothing else away from this presentation, remember this. Use construction drawing and practice from references. I keep reiterating this because I see people not doing this all the time. I get my references from the My Little Pony Vector Club on DeviantArt. Uh, the easiest way to find it is just type in MLP Vector Club on Google and it'll come up as the first result. Uh, write it down, please. <laughs> it's widely considered to be the best place to get show accurate vectors. They have hundreds of different pictures of almost all the characters. Next, eyes. Eyes are the window to the soul. And in MLP, they are huge. It's taken from anime, of course. The character's eye shapes differ based on their attributes. Rarity's eye, you can see, has huge eyelashes for glamour. Rainbow Dash has smaller, stubbier eyelashes to show her more tomboyish personality. My method for drawing eyes, you'll see when I'm sketching. For now, let's talk about highlights. The cuter the character is supposed to be, the more highlights in their eye. Most adult ponies have two. Phillies and Colts have three. Big Mac, Trixie, and the villains only have one because those characters are not supposed to be as cute. And the Diamond Dogs have zero because they're not cute at all. Now, why do the eyes look the way they do? Uh, probably when you're drawing a pony, the eyes are gonna be the most complicated part of it, and of course, they're really important to get right. Why do they look the way they do? It's easier to see in a more, quote, realistic picture, like this one from Lackadaisy Cats. Uh, the bottom of the eye is brighter because light is shining down on it from above. There's a smooth gradient from lighter to darker as you go up the iris of the eye. The highlights of the pupil, why, why are they there? They're positioned the way they are because of the convex cornea of the eye. The eye of a pony or a person or anything is curved at the front and it reflects light like you see on the ponies, but obviously it's exaggerated. Now, that probably just sounded like mumbo jumbo, I'm sorry. Just remember that the colored part of the eye is lighter on the bottom and darker on the top. If you're drawing a Pegasus pony, Generally, you're going to be either drawing the wings folded or outstretched. If the wings are folded, draw an egg shape, which it's almost a teardrop shape, and then just add the lines for feathers. If your character has a wing boner, <laughs> what, what? I recommend using a reference. Uh, it's, it's not really a shape that's easy to split. Sorry. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, it, it's, it's not exactly a shape that's easy to cut into distinct shapes. It just takes practice. As for Colts and Phillies, several things to keep in mind. Big, huge, round eyes. The eyes are perfectly round uh, on the near side of the head. Uh, stubby little legs, a huge head, and a tiny, tiny little body. If it's a Pegasus, uh, the wings only have three main feathers inside of, instead of the normal horn. Uh, normal, blah, blah, normal four excuse me, and it has a, just a little stubby horn for a unicorn. Again, use references. Last but certainly not least, shading. 
Now you can shade with pencil, uh, but I'm just going to use one of my digital pieces here as an example. Generally in the show, when a character is in bright light, the only shading is that the legs that are farther away are slightly darker, and there's an oval to show where the character's shadow is. In a darkened room like Zakora's hut, or if you just want to do it for effect, you can add gradient colors to emphasize parts of the drawing. Like as you can see, what I've done is uh, I drew the, um, the glowing aura inside the pot, and, it's, uh, and you can see that there's a glow that's coming out onto her face and on her body as well. Now, keep in mind when you're shading, your character is three-dimensional. Even though you're drawing it in two dimensions, the character is three-dimensional. The head is generally a sphere shape, the body is a pear shape, and the legs are kind of like cylinders. Consider where your light source is and how it would interact with those shapes. Keep those things in mind, and you will be well on your way. Now let's set up the webcam so we can put what we learned into practice. Are you guys still awake? I said, are you guys still awake? Much better, okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay, awesome. Okay. So I am going to use a reference. I'm going to be drawing Twilight Sparkle. So, uh, generally, I start with the head. Uh, sorry about the shadows on the. Uh, sorry about the shadows on the um, on the thing. I'll try to make sure that you guys can see. So, uh, generally, you're going to start. I, I like to start with the head and just draw draw a basic circle. And uh, also, generally, my sketches are more polished, but uh, because I'm limited on time, I'm just going to do a quick sketch here. So, first of all, you're going to draw just a circle. Uh, now, this, this is a bit of a complicated pose, but you can see that uh, if you think about where her ribs would be, her ribs would be right here, and then you've got the behind right here. So uh, those are going to be your two guide circles. Weird. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now you're going to draw a line connecting the head to the body. This is basically this is the backbone because the backbone goes from the hip all the way up to the back of the neck. Generally, this is going to be a very important line for your pose. So you need you need to know where your backbone is so that you, uh, so that your character has a backbone, and like Fluttershy. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you're, you're all free to hate me, I, I don't care. Okay, so a after, you're gonna, after you draw the backbone, then let's move on to the positioning of the legs, and we'll call them the arms, they're not, they're, they're the front legs, so. Uh, on this pose that I'm doing, the the front arm comes down like this. And then she's leaning on her other arm like this. And then her back legs, something like this. Now, the thing, the thing is, see, see how fast I drew that? When you're using construction drawing and you're using just simple lines to show where your stuff can go, you can easily map out even multiple poses if you want and then just pick the one that you like. Or like, let's say for example, I didn't like where this arm was. I can just erase really simply and just put it back in. This is, this is why you should use construction drawing because it's so easy to get your drawing to look the way you want. If I had started with the outlines, maybe I'd gotten halfway through and I'm like, oh crap, the head is too small. You know. 
So next, I'm going to start adding the outline and the details. I generally like to add the ear next. Uh, the ear, like I said, is halfway down the head. So if you just cut the head into half, then you can just draw the ear right there. I like to draw big ears. How much more time do I have? <laughs> okay. 15? Okay. Uh, like I was telling you, with the horn, uh, it's one-fourth of the way from the top of the head. 20? Okay, awesome. Uh, next, the muzzle. Just like I was telling you, you cut it into eighths, then sixteenths, and there's the muzzle right there. I drew the arm a little bit too big. Uh, now, if your preferred method is digital sketching, I, I haven't I haven't moved up to the point of digital sketching yet. But uh, if your if your preferred method is digital sketching, you can use a lot of these same techniques, like uh, especially drawing the simple circles and lines to show where the parts of the pony should go. Uh, you can do that just as easily in Paint Tool Sci as you can uh, on paper. So. Okay, let's add her arms and her back. Oh. Now see, here, here, here's just an example. I drew this shoulder too low, so it's easy enough to fix at this point. If I had already drawn her arm with the sock on it already, I would have been like, ah, I just wasted like 30 minutes of work. There we go. That's better. So I, I, have, I have a question for you guys, because uh, you guys are really quiet, and I want you guys to have fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. OK, we're going to hold a contest for best pony. OK? Now, uh, Spike is not best pony. He's a dragon, even though, even though apparently he wants to be a pony for some reason. <laughs> best dragon. I can agree with that. Uh, the other dragons in the show are not nearly as awesome as Spike. Okay, so here's what, here's what we're going to do. I want you to think, think which of the main six is your favorite, okay? Okay, okay. Now we're going to vote by cheering, okay? Whichever one is the loudest is officially the best pony, okay? So, we're going to start with my favorite, Rainbow Dash. Okay, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. All right, Fluttershy fans. Oh, Rainbow Dash fans, I'm so disappointed. Fluttershy has you beaten. Okay. Louder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, uh, let's do uh, Twilight Sparkle. Oh, that sounded about the same as Fluttershy. Oh, okay. Applejack. That, that was pretty impressive. Okay, let's see, Rarity? Oh goodness, I think that was louder than Fluttershy, guys. I think Ra Rarity's in the lead right now, and only one more. Pinkie Pie. Oh dear Lord. <laughs> guys just about burst my eardrums, come on guys. Well. Sorry, sorry to everyone else, but Pinkie Pie is apparently best pony. Okay, uh, how about this? While, while, I am, um, while I'm still finishing up the drawing, how about we do some questions? So uh, if somebody, if one of the staff people could help me by just pointing out who has a question.
Okay, yell it out loud and proud. How did I get into My Little Pony? That is a really good question. Well, I am a Redditor. I, I, really, I enjoy Reddit. I enjoy all of Reddit. But uh, I had seen tons of stuff on Reddit about My Little Pony. I was like, that looks really stupid. That, uh, why, why, would that, why would that even interest me at all? But, uh, but a, bunch of, a bunch of people were like, oh, you've got to try it. It's so good. It's like drugs. <laughs> And so, <laughs> and so, I, so I watched the first episode, and I was like, eh, this is pretty good. I watched another episode. I was like, wow, this is really awesome. I watched, and, and by the end of the first season, I was just like, ponies. <laughs> good question, good question. All right, let's hear another one. Okay, speak it loud and proud. I, have, I personally have not. A lot of people on DeviantArt have done that. Uh, if you're interested in seeing that, just do a search, My Little Pony Realistic or something like that. Yep. That is a good question. Uh, I, personally use a, um, I personally use a mechanical pencil which gives a lot sharper, finer lines than, I, than if, you, if, you, if I was using like a big soft leaded pencil and I did like this, it would be just like <laughs> But uh, using a mechanical pencil, I, I have a lot less problem with it. If I've, if I've shaded a drawing, I have a lot of problems with, with smudging it. What I do is I just have to you know, wash my hands or something so that, uh, so that, I, don't, so that I don't smudge the drawing and I just, I just touch it as, less, as little as I can so I don't smudge it. <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't have any better answer than that. But No problem. Use a mechanical pencil. So, uh, Anybody else? Okay. Open for collabs. Uh, I have several commissions that I'm working on right now, so I'm not doing anything that people aren't paying me for. <laughs> but... Um, yeah, somebody, so I, I, I don't, I am a really crazy person. Somebody is considering commissioning me to do a poster of their 30 Fallout Equestria OCs. So, <laughs> I may be working on that all winter. But <laughs> anyway, uh, if, I, if I finish up my commissions, you can look on my DeviantArt page, drawponies.deviantart.com. You can look at my DeviantArt page and see uh, whether requests are open. If requests are open, then I would be open for a collaboration. Yep, more questions. Do I do ship shipping of Derpy and the Doctor? Um, okay. I do not draw not safe for work art. That's just, that's just my personal preference. But I have no problem with uh, light shipping. If you pay me to do a commission, I will draw it. <laughs> Okay. Speak up. Hold on, hold on. We've got two people talking at the same time. I'm talking to this guy right here. Yes. That is an exceptionally good question. Okay, let's say that you're trying to draw your OC, uh, and, you, and you're like, oh, well, I can't find a reference of my OC because it's my OC. What you're going to want to do is, I, I would recommend, go on MLP Vector Club, find a pose that you like. Because generally the ponies all have the same proportions. Uh, generally the ponies all have the same proportions, so if you find a pose that you like, like say for example, if you, if you really liked this pose that I did, you could look it up on DeviantArt and draw your OC in that pose. You just have to change, you know, the mane, the tail, you know, maybe give it wings, you know, something like that. So that, that would be what I would recommend. No problem. Anybody else? Uh, I'm working on drawing um, anthros and humans, but they're a lot harder. 
So <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully I will be more skilled at that soon. But sorry. Okay. <laughs> All right. We'll take a few more questions. Guy in the back in the blue, speak up. As for backgrounds, um, what I would recommend for backgrounds is um, learn Photoshop. Because a lot of the backgrounds have gradients in them, which is unusual. The ponies don't generally have gradients in them. But uh, for backgrounds, I would recommend, uh, one, learn Photoshop and paint tool sci, and uh, just look at the backgrounds from the show. So. All right, let's do another question. Uh, some of the art is really good. Uh, I, I don't understand some of them. I'm just like, what? They have pink hair. Apparently, it's Fluttershy. <laughs> OK. You know, but <laughs> uh, I, I am just continually amazed by the amount of creativity and uh, a just amazing artistic talent in this fandom. Like, just as an example, I was very honored that they picked me to do the art panel because you know, they have John Joseco here. Why didn't they pick him? I don't, I don't understand. Thank you for picking me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so. Whether you're drawing anything besides ponies or our ponies, do you have any personal uh, picture or uh, art that you like to draw during your time? Uh, I like to draw ponies. <laughs> Uh, I don't generally draw anything else nowadays because, again, I'm doing commissions all the time. <laughs> Let's see. Is there a drawing that you have ever done that you're not exactly proud of, whether or not it was punching wise or something like that? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the first couple of drawings on my DeviantArt, don't look at them. <laughs> Please. Like, I have, pink, I have a drawing of Pinkie Pie, and it's like, Pinkie Pie. <laughs> like, I look back on it now and I'm just like, oh, God. <laughs> so, yes. But, uh, you know, and, and that's the thing is that, you know, in, in six months, if you practice, you look back at this stuff six months from six months before and you'll say, wow, I, wow, I can't believe I used to draw like that. And then six months again, you'll be like, wow, I can't believe I used to draw like that. If you are continually practicing and improving. Somebody else? Uh, I have not. Uh, my, my style is actually a little bit, um, I, I generally draw the ponies with large heads and short legs anyway. Uh, I have not tried to draw the, I have not tried to draw the Gen 4 style. If somebody commissioned me to do it, I would. <laughs> okay, awesome. Go to my DeviantArt and send me a note. <laughs> Okay, I'll be happy to. Uh, yeah, this, uh, guys, I, I want to thank you guys, uh, Brony community, you guys watching on Everfree. I, I want to thank you because basically I draw ponies all day, every day as my full-time job. So thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to have enough time to finish up the sketch, uh, unfortunately. Uh, you know, if 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 you guys want to see me drawing, uh, you guys can come to my live stream, which is every Saturday. Every Saturday that I'm not at a con, <laughs> I I do a live stream on um, I do a live stream on livestream.com/drawponies, uh, and my DeviantArt is drawponies.deviantart.com. Uh, one thing I wanted to one thing I wanted to do uh, one of the last things I wanted to do here is the the thing about cons is that they end. Cons are amazing, but they end. So here's what I want you to do: get out your phone. If you want to stay in touch with me, if you want to stay in touch with me on Skype, you're more than welcome to join me for my live stream on our Skype calls. Uh, you're more than welcome to um, follow me on DeviantArt. Uh, you know, keep the con experience going. 
Because what you've seen me do here today is very similar to what we do on the live streams every week. You can, you're all welcome. So if you want to keep in touch, uh, uh, I have my own phone number for the show. It's 408-PONIES0. Text your Skype name or your email address right there. So like if I was doing it, I would text Skype Neil the Nerd one that, that, would be, that would be what I would send if, if I were you. But I'm not you, so you send your information, and uh, we will keep in touch. So um, very last thing, I am selling stuff at booth G2. So it's on the second page of your program, uh, the second vendor's page. Uh, booth G2 is mine. I have, uh, if you guys, uh, how many of you guys are getting autographs? You guys are getting autographs? Yes, okay. Uh, you can get Twilight Sparkle for Tara Strong to sign. That would be awesome. You can get Zakora for Brenda to sign. That would be awesome. You can get, uh, I don't know if Lauren is still doing autographs or not, but I have Lauren Faust prints as well. And I have, I have Vinyl Scratch. So that's just, that's just some examples of the stuff that you'll see at my booth. So thank you very much for your attention and your time. And see you later!